All right, welcome to Strider Tree Gear. Today we are once again back with our friends at Gold Country Tractor up in Grass Valley, and we're talking about knots. I wanna give you guys some of the essential knots to tree work. These are the basics. This is not comprehensive, but this ought to give you the most necessary ones. These are the ones I teach the groundies and the climbers on their first day at work, and they can't, there's no pay raise until all of these are mastered. So today, this video, we'll be talking about the Bolin series and some of the knots related to that. So here we go, let's check it out. So starting out, the staple, the bread and butter of tree work is the bowlin. Obviously we use this knot because it, it doesn't cinch down so hard that we can't untie it. So you can almost always untie it. This is not a life support rated knot, so you don't want to use this to tie to your harness to save your own life, but for attaching most, attaching your rope to most anything, a bowlin is a great knot. So the basics of the bowlin are such. You've got your loop that goes around something, so we're going to use this for the example right now and then you tie the knot on the rope below. So here's how I do it. The, it's the old, ad, there's, a, there's a, a memnotic device where you, you make a little loop, and the rabbit goes in the hole, around the tree, and back out the hole. And that's your bowline. You know it's got this crossover on the one side, two parallel strands coming out here. We've got the loop and this. Now the one thing I wanna point out with the bowline, and this is why it's not a life support knot, as this is relaxed and tensioned, relaxed and tensioned, if you notice that end, it stays loose, but this end is working itself in. So if I do this a whole bunch of times, eventually it can pop free. So it's almost all the way out here at this point. This is the sort of knot you wanna to use to tie something at one, in, at one time and then leave it under tension. So once again, you make the loop, rabbit goes in the hole, around the tree and back out the hole. Now, what often gets my groundies goat is that that initial loop, the direction of the initial loop determines which way the rabbit has to go through the hole. So if I flip my loop this way, now the rabbit has to go in the hole the other direction, around the tree and back out the hole. So my knot got flipped around, but it's still the same knot. So if I flip the loop the other way. Once again, the rabbit goes the opposite direction through the hole, around and through. If that, if, if that, if you go the wrong way, what happens is the knot doesn't, it comes out like that, it untwists. So usually you can tell if it's wrong. Another way to tie this knot is um, I'll actually take my free end of the rope and I'll cross over and pull it up. I don't know if you saw that mo movement, but take the free end, cross over the standing end, pull up, go around the tree and drop it back through. So I do that all with one hand, all in one motion. Come on, there we go. And it, it now this knot is, it's rotated 90 degrees, but it's still the same knot and it should still hold. I use that same technique when I'm tying a sheep end. And so I wanna demonstrate that here. We use the sheep end very frequently. Um, the beauty of the sheep end is that you can tie two notes of different diameters to each other. Now we're just gonna pretend this is, this is the rope that's hanging from the tree. It's my climb line. I'm like, ah, oh, hey guys, tie on me a, a new rigging rope or something. So the way the sheep end works is, is much like the bowline. You can make your loop, rabbit can go through the hole, around the tree, back through the loop, cinch that down, boom. So we've got two ropes, different diameter, and I can pull this up to myself. Now, one of the tricks with this knot is you're supposed to use uh, the, the bigger diameter rope is only supposed to go through one direction, whereas the smaller diameter rope uh, must be must form the loop. So it won't hold as well if you reverse it. For example, if I make my loop with the small diameter rope and I go through and around and back up with the bigger diameter rope, it may not hold as well. In this case, they're close enough diameter. It's not gonna make a difference. And I might've actually had that backwards. <laughs> 
Now, if you look closely, the, the actual shape of this knot is the same as the bowline. So it's, it, it functions essentially the same. Um, and we use it for tying rope to rope very often. If I'm gonna have to add a length of rope to a rope, say where I'm pulling, I'm gonna try and pull a tree over. My one rope's not quite long enough. One of the things I'll do is I'll do a double sheep end. I'll tie a sheep end on one side of the rope. And then I'll take the tail and I'll do another sheep end from the other side and I'll neutralize the lengths, the, the spare lengths of rope so that, let's see if I can do it here. It's not a great example. So that as I pull on either side, I've got a little bit of redundancy. Is it necessary? No, probably not. Does it make things much better? No, probably not, but it makes me feel better, so I do it. So that's the sheep end. When going back to the bowline series, sometimes you've got a whole lot of rope out and you don't want to tie a bowline using the end of the rope. Well, there's at least two, if not three or four different ways to tie a bowline on a bike. So we're going to pull a bunch of, bunch of rope out here and I'm going to be like, oh, okay, I don't want, I want to put a bowline right here because I need a loop. Um, but I don't want to pull the whole rope through the bowline the whole way. Well, there, here's one way to do that. So you take a bite of rope. You tie an overhand knot with the bite itself. A little bit more slack makes this easier, but I'm trying to keep it in the frame here. So you take the, the bite out of the overhand, you fold it back over itself, and then you pull this doubled up side out and it cinches down the loop that you flip through. Now this is a bowline on a bite. You can attach uh, something to this part of the loop and it will generally uh, you can generally put a lot of force on it and, uh, and it won't jam up so badly that you can't get it undone. So we use this a lot. It's fast. Uh, the first time I do it, some groundy always tries to feed the whole rope through to untie it. It doesn't, it's, you gotta, gotta wait, watch, wait and watch that and expect it. The only way to undo it easily is to f reverse the order. So you pull that back over itself and then untie it. Happens pretty easy, it's pretty quick. I'll show that again. You get a bite. Always pull out more rope than you need. Tie an overhand knot with the bite. Overhand knot. You take your bite, fold it back over itself, and then grab this portion right here and cinch down the loop that you pulled over. And now you can attach your block or you can pull from here. Either of these are valid to pull on. So either of these ends can be loaded and it's safe. A lot of times I'll use this for my one rope two to one or one rope three to one. And I got a video about that on my Instagram, if you want to see that. So that's one of the bowline on a bites. The other way is to tie, one of the other ways to tie a bowline on a bite is you can actually just take a bite of rope and you can tie a bowline with it. You can have a doubled up. You just act like it's one, one long section of rope. I need some more here. So make your loop, put it around here. Go, the rabbit goes through the hole, around the tree and back through the hole. Now I've just got a bowline. It, it functions exactly the same, except it's doubled up. There you go. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll clip a carabiner with that third one, and now it actually can't back free because the tail is captured. So this is a great way to do a bowline on a bite in a way that it won't untie. Obviously the other one won't either, but this can be very secure. All right, so those are the two primary ways I tie a bowline on a bite. Both of those work well. So we've got the regular bowline, bowline on a bite, two different methods, and the sheep end. That's the bowline series. We use that day in, day out, all the time. Highly recommend it. Not for life support, but great for pulling hard on things. So thanks for joining me here at Strider Tree Gear. This is uh, the first episode of the knot series with the bowlines. I uh, hope you found that useful. If there are knots that you love and would like me to demonstrate or you're curious about uh, and would like me to, to explain more, be sure to leave it in the comments. Like, subscribe, leave, uh, hit that notification bell if you wanna be tuned in for the next episode. We'll be talking about friction hitches on the next one. So thank you for joining me again. See you next time.